Well, good evening, everyone. It's certainly good to be on with you this evening. I'm Pastor Jeff Bowles out of Good Samaritan Baptist Church. Just trying to get the camera straightened up here and everything. And I uh, hope everyone's having a good day and has had a good day and uh, <clears throat> and everything. And uh, this is an outreach ministry of our church. And this is our midweek remote service and uh and everything and uh, we want to get our service started with some prayer time certainly want to remember everyone on the prayer list and we want to remember uh want to remember miss ann's uh granddaughter this evening michelle bell is her name she's not doing good at all and just want to remember her in prayer this evening just pray uh for her and pray for miss ann as well and the whole family there and uh, pray for Miss Ann and Miss Janie. They were unable to be with us on Sunday and everything. So just continue to pray for them as well and uh, and everything. And continue to pray for uh, Brother Jerry. Pray for him and uh, pray that God will reach down and touch him. Hadn't had a chance to talk to Brother uh, Jerry and everything. But uh, do continue to remember him in prayer and remember his mother-in-law in prayer as well. And uh, also, uh, let's remember uh, um, <clears throat> Sister Jean this evening. Continue to remember her in prayer. And Miss Marie, of course, me and Melissa, we visited with James and Marie again on Sunday. Had some things we need to talk to James about, so we run by there and saw them. And they were doing pretty good and everything. So just continue to remember them in prayer as well. Uh, I want to ask you to remember Paula and Curtis in prayer. Uh, just having a wave of things going on there. I'm not going to get into it, but I know Paula and Curtis would appreciate the prayers. Uh, just got some different crazy things just happening and, and, and everything. So just continue to remember them in prayer and everything and just pray for them and uh, pray that God will reach down and touch their needs and continue to help them and everything and uh we're just just praying for you guys and and everything and uh just continue also to remember my uncle william and my aunt linda in prayer as well pray for them pray that god will reach down and touch them and continue to help them and and uh and everything and uh just continue to remember my cousin serena in prayer now she's the one that had the pacemaker that's literally just it's all of what's controlling her heart that they put in her and everything. So continue to remember her in prayer as well and everything. And, uh, let's, uh, okay. Crystal just shot me something says, please remember Rogers boss man's family. His dad passed away. His name is, uh, Roger hammock. Uh, let's remember that family. Uh, this is Rogers, uh, uh, boss man's uh, dad he passed away so we want to remember that family and everything remember them in prayer and uh, and everything and uh, let's just remember them uh, and everything remember that need and uh, let's just continue to remember all the needs of our church and everyone uh, continue to remember brother Paul brother Paul uh, still got to have some more tests done and everything they're still looking at some things there so just continue to remember him he's having some different things going on with him and everything so just continue to remember him in prayer as well and everything and remember miss annette as she's looking after him and everything so just remember her in prayer as well and uh as i said a while ago sister jean continue to remember her family uh wendy and michael and uh um the uh the husband there and everything uh can't uh can't ever remember his name sometimes so just remember him in prayer as well and everything and just lift them up in prayer too as they look after sister jean and everything and um uh, let's just go to the lord in prayer there's just a whole lot of things to pray about uh this evening and let's just remember them and i believe paula's brother is going to have surgery uh soon uh for his hernia so let's remember him continue to remember uh uh brother curtis's uh sister uh things going on with her and and everything and uh just remember her in prayer and uh, uh let's just go to the lord in prayer and pray over these and then i'll make some announcements and everything concerning the church and uh, let's let's just go to the lord in prayer and pray for the service tonight amen uh, let's pray our eternal grace assembly father we thank you lord we thank you for this day thank you father for blessing us throughout the uh, day and 
Lord, just by all that you've done and all that you're going to do for us, Lord, we just pray and give you all the honor and praise and glory for it, Lord. And, Lord, we just pray and ask you to reach down and touch these many needs, Father. And, Father, I pray and ask you to reach down and touch Brother Jerry and continue to have your hand upon him and upon his family, his mother-in-law, and then, Lord, his sister-in-law there, just continue to touch them. And then we know that they're going to be putting his mother-in-law in a home. We pray that all of that goes smooth. Lord, just put your hand on that and touch that according to thy will, Lord, and just uh, just have your mighty hand upon them, Lord, and help them, Lord. And, Lord, we pray also now for Paul and Curtis, Lord, just some things going on there in their life, Lord. I just pray that you'd speak peace under those situations, Lord, and continue to help them, Father, and put your hand upon those situations and help them, Lord, and lead, guide, and direct them, Lord, and show them the directions that you'd have them to go, Lord. And then, Lord, I just pray for Sister Marie that you'd continue to touch her and help her, and Brother James, Lord, continue to touch him, strengthen him. Brother Paul, this evening, Father, pray that your mighty hand would be upon him and continue to touch him and help him father and then lord i just pray for the many other needs lord my uncle william and my aunt linda continue to touch them my cousin serena lord have your hand upon her and help her and then roger's uh boss man the hammock family here the passing of this dad father i just pray that your mighty hand would be upon that family and help them lord undergird them with thy love and thy strength lord and and just go with them father and help them lord and Lord, I just pray and ask you to bless the service tonight and have your hand upon it. And Lord, I just pray for everyone that's watching now and everyone that will watch later, Lord. You just lead, guide, and direct it, Lord, according to your will. And Lord, we'll be careful to give you the honor and praise and glory for it all. And we ask these things all in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Well, in the way of announcements for the church, don't forget about Sunday morning, 10 o'clock being our prayer room time. Uh, continue to pray uh, for our service, and you come on out and join us in our uh, prayer rooms. Uh, we truly believe that our services are beginning in our prayer rooms, amen, and then our service at 1030. Now, Pastor made the statement last week, and I'm going to have to retract it right here. Uh, and everything that we would start having a Sunday evening service and we are going to start having a Sunday evening service every Sunday evening. Now the second and fourth Sundays, the service will be in the church. Amen. We will be holding those services unless otherwise uh, told to you uh, they will be in the church but the other two Sundays they will be uh, I'll be doing them from here at my home but now this coming Sunday uh, Miss Melissa reminded me that it was Father's Day so we won't be having any kind of service in the evening time this Sunday because of it being Father's Day but now starting next month which is the month of July we will be having a service on every Sunday evening, whether it be from here at my home or from there in the church. The second and the fourth Sunday will be held in the church, and then the other two I will do a broadcast like I'm doing this evening from here at home and everything. So you be in much prayer for those services, and uh, just pray and uh, pray that God will reach down and, and touch and lead and guide and direct us the way he'd have us to go. And then pray for our upcoming service uh, this coming Sunday morning. Pray for the, our Sunday evening services as they take place. And then our Wednesday evening remote service continue to pray for them as well. And then I want you to be in much prayer uh, for our visitation. Now, we're going to start a new visitation program the fourth Saturday of every month, and that's going to start this month. Amen. And what we'll be doing, we'll be coming together, and we, uh, Pastor is our, and Miss Melissa, we, uh, we've got the letter finished. Uh, we finished up the letter this past weekend and that's uh, from the pastor, and that'd be from me and everything in uh uh, we're going to be putting them in envelopes, and we're going to be putting one of our little Bible tracks in that envelope as well. And what we're going to be doing, we're going to be mailing them out into the community, amen, and inviting people to come to church 
and and everything and just give them my opportunity to come and visit good samaritan amen and if nothing else we'll be giving them the salvation plan amen we may never see them walk through the church door but one day they may walk through the door of heaven solely because they got this little Bible track and maybe that letter from our church. Amen. And God used that to prick their heart and to draw them to him. Amen. And that's what counts and that's what matters. So you be in much prayer for that. And then this coming Saturday, now this coming Saturday, we'll be having the celebration of life of Miss Beverly New. Uh, and that'll be taking place at one o'clock until three amen and that's this coming saturday if you can't attend now miss stephanie has given permission for it to be on facebook so you'll be looking for it on the church facebook page and everything we will have that service up on facebook and everything so you be in much prayer pray uh pray for the family pray for miss stephanie uh just pray for them uh, miss beverly knew went home to be with the lord uh, a, a few weeks back and everything and we do miss her but we will be celebrating her life as i said on sunday not only the life that she lived here but we know the life that she lives now amen because we know the bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the lord and we believe and know in our hearts due to her testimony that she is with the lord so you be in much prayer for all of these services and now i do want to say this to the church uh, family and to the church members. Uh, please don't worry about the air. Uh, we had a good service on Sunday and everything, and uh, Pastor got that worked out for us and everything as far as the air and everything. And then on Monday, Brother James met uh, a, a gentleman over there, and this gentleman put a capacitor in, and guess what? Our blower started working in the furnace, so we've got air restored to the sanctuary. And Pastor will tell the church more about that situation uh, on Sunday. Amen. And everything, but God's answered some prayers in that deal and everything. And we're really happy and we're really pleased with the things that God's doing. Amen. So uh, listen, God can answer prayers. Amen. If we'll just give those things to him. Amen. And everything. And uh <clears throat> And uh, that, that'll that take care, I think, of the announcements for the night and, uh, and everything. And Pastor was thinking on that thought. I want us to turn and look at something tonight. Um, I was going to go somewhere, but I think I'm going to go somewhere else. Uh, maybe some words of encouragement uh, uh, for us tonight and everything. And uh, I want you to turn with me to the book of Matthew. Turn with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 11. The service, uh, we may not run quite as long tonight. Uh, Pastor, just just, just want to give you some words of encouragement. Maybe uh, we may turn on another place or two uh, and everything and look at some things. But I want you to turn with me tonight to the book of Matthew, if you will. The book of Matthew tonight, Matthew chapter 11. And everything, and I want us to look at some scripture that's found here, and everything, and uh, we and we may turn a couple other places and look, uh, and everything, and uh, I just want us to look uh, here. What he says here, he says in verse twenty-eight. Uh, well, first of all, let's go back up. Uh, let's go back up to verse twenty-seven. Excuse me. I want I want to show you something here. I know we got some folks going through some things and different things happening. Um, and all of us we face problems. Uh, let me say something to you. There's a lot of people in the world today. A lot of preachers that'll they'll preach uh, messages that Christians uh, don't ever have to face sickness. Uh, they don't ever have to face problems. You shouldn't have to face these things. Well, let me say something to you. I think Sunday I used the scripture. Uh, Jesus made this statement to us out of the book of John. He said, in this world, you shall have tribulation. And I made this statement uh, in, in, in the outline on Sunday that that's a warning from our Lord. And it is. He was trying to tell us, hey, we're going to have problems. We're going to face different kinds of things and, and, and different things is going to be coming our way. But let me say something else to you. He said this too in the book of John, uh, and everything. Um, 
he said, um, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Uh, this is the verse that I used on Sunday. Amen. Uh, out of the book of John chapter 16, I believe it was. Uh, let's just, listen, I, I'm not trying to repeat my message from Sunday, but I'm going to turn over there real quickly before I read this verse to you here. This is just the way God's leading me, uh, and everything. He said there in 33, he, in John 16, 33, he says, these things I've spoken unto you. That's his counsel. As I said on Sunday, that you might have peace. Uh, he wants you to, he wants you to be at calm. In the world, you shall have tribulation. There's the warning. But then he says, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Um, not trying to reflect back on Sunday's message, but it, it fits in here tonight. Because he said, we're going to have problems. We're going to have things that's going to come our way. Listen, and in this whole world, there's things going to cost us money. There's things going to cost us friends. There's things that's going to cost us family members. Uh, sometimes people walk away from you, and, and that grieves you. But there's one thing that you can count on, and that's our Lord. Amen. If you belong to him tonight, if you're truly born again, he made us a promise. He said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. I will be with thee even unto the end of the way. Amen. Let me say something to you. No matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through tonight, that's tribulation. That's true. But let me say something to you tonight. If you've got Jesus Christ, there's not anything in this world that you can't overcome. No problem tonight is too big or too small for him. Amen. Now, listen, pastor ain't going to sit here and tell you that it's going to work out tomorrow. It's going to work out the next day. It's going to work out in God's time. And I know there's people, I've had people in the church to tell me, well, I don't like that. And I don't want, listen, that's where we all live. We're living on God's time, amen? And listen, I know we live in an instant world, and I know I've said this on many occasions, a lot of things come instant. But listen, sometimes we have to just sit still and wait on the Lord, amen? That's what we have to do. And I, and I just want to give you those words again tonight of encouragement. He said, these things I've spoken unto you that you might have peace. God wants you to have peace about it tonight. Amen. In the world, you shall have tribulation. He said, we were going to have problems. But he says, be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. And then I want to read to you what he says to us in Matthew. He says, come unto me. Did you hear what he said? He says, come to me. He's saying, come to me. Don't go to the world. Don't go to this one. Don't go to that one. We shouldn't be trying to seek advice anywhere else, but come to the Lord. He says, come unto me, all you that are lab labor and are heavy laden. Those burdens, those things you're trying to carry on your shoulders. Jesus wants you to come to him and take those things off. Listen to what he said, and I will give you rest. Oh, listen to what he says. He'll, he'll help your mind to rest. Amen. He'll help your heart to rest. Amen. He'll take those things from us if we'll just give them to him. Amen. And it don't make any difference what it is. Whatever the problem is, what we have to do is what he says right here. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. What he's saying is, is take that thing off of you. Take that yoke, take that burden, and hand it to me. Amen. That's what he's saying to us tonight. Amen. And he says, for I'm meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest under your souls. Amen. You shall find rest under your souls. Amen. And, and that's what we're looking for. We're looking for that calmness. We're looking for that peace tonight for, for our souls. But you notice what he said. He says, come to me. Now, listen, you got to come to him. In other words, you got to pray and you got to talk to him tonight. Amen. People will say, well, God knows what my problems are and the Lord knows what my problems are. Why have I got to talk to him? Because that's part of the relationship. Amen. That's part of, that's part of it. Amen. That I'm sorry as I can be. Uh, no, I'm not going to apologize for God's word. That's not what I'm saying. Uh, I, this is what I'm saying to you. That's just how it is. We got to come to him. When you wanted something from mom and dad, what did you have to do? You had to come to them, amen? When I wanted something from my daddy, I had to come and talk to him about it. 
when I had a problem that mom and dad could help, I had to come and talk to them about it. Amen. I had to lay my cards on the table, if you will. And when I'm, and listen, this is, this is, listen, that's what Jesus is saying. He's saying, come on, just come to me. Come to me. No matter what it is. And listen, here's the interesting thing. You ever notice how we are? We try to hide things. We try to put things away. No matter, no matter what it, no matter what it is, God's saying, come on. Just come on. Come on and talk to me about it. Amen. Uh, many times in the Bible, he, he makes this statement, come unto me. And, and it's in different ways. Amen. It is. It's in different ways. He says, come to me. See, all kinds of scripture right now is running through my head and they're all just kind of running together. Over there in the book of Jeremiah 33, 3, he says, call upon me and I will answer thee. Now, oh, don't you like that? Now, see, that's the same thing. He's saying, call on me. He's saying, ring my digits, call me up. And ain't you thankful that we don't have to use a cell phone to call him, amen? I'm being honest. I'm being truthful with you tonight. Now, this is just, listen, I'm telling you, these are the things that God's laying on my heart right now. Because I believe many of us are facing problems. Many of us are facing different things and, and everything. And this is the direction that God's took and taking me this evening. Uh, listen, uh, uh, I'm just going, I'm just going to lay the cards out here and put it on the table. Many of us are facing different things and, and different things in our lives. Amen. I made mention last night. Uh, last night, I uh, made mention a while ago, Paul and Curtis, different things going on in their life. Just, just, just things one after another. And, and this is the way it goes sometimes. And my wife, uh, I know she won't mind me saying it, having work issues and, and things of that nature. I've been there. I've done that. And, and it, it'll drive you crazy. But you know what Jesus is saying? He's saying, come to me. Come bring that burden to me. Come bring that thing to me. And take it off of you and put it on me. Amen. And, and, and it makes me think, and I know Roger wouldn't mind me saying this, made me think about Roger uh, a little over a year ago. The problem, uh, brand almost brand new truck. They had to tear down his motor. Roger had that problem. Amen. They had to work on his truck. And, and listen, when your vehicle's down and those things are going on and there's things going on in the house and there's things going on at work and maybe it's dealing with your children. I don't know tonight. But listen, God knows tonight. And what does he say? He says, come to me. Come to me. All you that are laboring and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. You know what he's saying? Don't try to tote that burden by yourself. Come bring that thing to me and let me help you with it. Amen? And you say, God's willing to help me with these things? You better believe he is. He's standing right there. And like I said, like he said, now Roger, uh, Roger and Crystal could tell you how long he was. I think Roger was two, three months, maybe even longer than that, without his truck. But guess what? He's driving it again, and it didn't come right away. But guess what? God worked that thing out. Amen. I'm being honest. And see, God, Roger, and give God the praise tonight because he worked it out that Roger could keep his truck. They got it fixed, got it back to him and everything. Listen, they tore the motor down. And I'm just using Roger's example tonight. But you listen to what I'm saying to you tonight. God can work those problems out, and sometimes they take time. These things take time. That's where we get impatient. But you remember what he says to us out of the book of James? I'm going to turn to the book of James quickly tonight. You, I'm going to tell you right now, this coming right out of the throne room of heaven tonight. I'm being honest. Uh, and I use, I use this verse, I think, on Sunday, too. In, in, in uh, James chapter 1, verse 2, he said, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers' temptations. Divers means many, many troubles. He said, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. See, sometimes our faith is put to the test. It work. Amen. Listen, the trying. He's going to test it out. He's going to try. He's going to see how much you really trust him. Amen. How much are you really trusting him tonight? Amen. But listen to what he said. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect in, perfect in time, wanting nothing. You're going to come out on the other side wanting nothing. Amen. When you trust God, amen, that's the catch. And letting patience have her work. Now, listen, I, I admit it. And my wife said amen on Sunday. I'm not a patient person. And she may say amen again tonight. I don't know. Uh, she's in a different part of the house. 
But you listen to what I'm saying to you tonight. We have to learn to be patient and wait on God. She just said it, amen, uh, and everything. And Pastor's using his hands a whole lot tonight. But you listen, but let patience have her perfect work. We got to let it, we got to let patience work. That we what? That we'll be, that we'll be mature and entire, wanting nothing. We come out on the other side, what? Satisfied, amen. And Miss Paula's laughing. She said, LOL, about Miss Melissa saying amen. Oh, my goodness. But listen, you hear what he said. But I want, listen, I didn't use this verse on Sunday. But listen to what he says in verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, you hear that? If any of you lack, is there something lacking in your life? Is the wisdom lacking in your life? Is there something else? But if you lack wisdom, whose wisdom is it we need today? We need God's knowledge, and then we need his wisdom to use that knowledge. Oh, my goodness, that, that's profound. I'll just leave that alone now. But he said, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of who? Let him ask of God. They give us to all men liberally and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. But listen to what he said in verse 6. But let him ask in faith. Nothing wavering. Do you hear what he said? We got to ask trusting him. That's what the Bible's saying. We got to be trusting him. Amen. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he wavereth is like the wave of the sea, driven with the wind and is tossed. Do you hear what he said? When when we lack that faith, we become like we become like what? Like the one on the waves is back and forth. I trust in God. Now I don't, I'm not real sure. I trusted him today, but I'm not real sure about tomorrow. Honey, I got something to tell you. The same God's will you here today. I'll be with you tomorrow. Amen. He said, I am the Lord and I change not. Amen. I like that, don't you? But listen to what he said. For he wavereth is like the wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. This is why people get so tossed back to and fro. Amen. Because one day we trust him, next day we don't. We trust him with one problem, but we don't really trust him with this one, even though he brought us through this one over here and he worked this one out. Well, if he worked this problem out, he'll work this one out too. But you say, Pastor, they're coming one after another. That's trying sometimes of our faith. And we got to learn to trust him. Why? What did he say to us in the book of Matthew? Come unto me. Come unto me. So who are we coming to? We're coming to the Lord. We're coming to God. Amen. We're coming to the God that created and made this universe. And not only did he do that, but think about this. He made the little bitty ant. The God that made the little bitty ant is the same one that made me and you. He's the same one put the stars in the sky and the sun and the moon. Listen, he done all of that. Why do we think he can't help us? But the greatest thing that he's ever done for me and you is, is he walked Calvary's hill. He walked up Calvary's hill and took care of our sin problem. Amen. Took care of the debt for our sin. Amen. He who knew no sin was made sin for me and you. He died for me and you. So don't tell me he don't care. Amen. He cares about where you're going to spend eternity. He cares about, and listen, he cares so much about that that he was willing to die for me and you. Amen. He walked Calvary's hill. He shed his precious blood, and he died for me and you. And all we have to do when he's knocking at that door is open that door and say, Lord, come on in. Please forgive me, a sinner. Hmm. Whoo! Feeling a cool breeze from another world tonight. I'm being honest. Listen, all we have to do is repent of our sins and receive him as Lord and Savior. Believe that he died for us and believe that he was buried and believe he arose again on the third day. And now he's ascended back to the Father. And he sits at the right hand of the Father. And he does what for me and you? The Bible says he makes intercession for us. He's there on our behalf. Oh my goodness. Are you listening tonight? And he says there in Matthew. But wait a minute. Let me go back to James. Verse 7. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Back and forth. Listen. You can't straddle the fence. 
You can't. You can't straddle the fence. You can't believe in God today and don't believe in him tomorrow. You got to believe in him all the way. Amen. And you got to let him see you through that thing all the way. Amen. Oh, my goodness. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You become unstable and I become unstable when we believe today and don't tomorrow. When we believe him for this problem, but we're not real sure he can handle this one. Honey, I got something to tell you. If he can handle problem A, he can handle problem B. Amen. And C and D and E all the way through the alphabet. You know why? Because he said, I'm Alpha and Omega. I'm the beginning and the end. And honey, I got something to tell you. He's everything in between. Amen. He's all of it. He that hath the Son have life. And listen. These little things down here, these things that we go through down here, they're just they're just little things, amen? I know when you're going through it, it's a big thing. But listen, just think, there's a better day coming, amen? There's a better day coming, amen? But go back to Matthew with me quickly. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You know what that means? Take that thing off. Take that thing off. Whatever that problem is, whatever that burden is, just take it off and hand it to him. And, and, and just let him calm you. Put his yoke on. Why? Because it's light. And, he, and listen, and his yoke is easy and his burden is light. That's what he's saying to you. Tonight, amen. I'm being honest with you tonight. That's what he's saying to me and you tonight. I want to read something else that's found. I know I read this scripture uh, probably many times, but th these are just tremendous verses that we find in Peter. I love to go to Peter. Peter chapter 5. Let me let Pastor find his, uh, where he's looking, amen. Oh, here it is. Listen to what he says. He he says in verse 6, this goes along with what we're talking about tonight. Uh, this is talking about just, uh, just uh, <clears throat> uh, and everything. This is what he's talking about. I was looking at something and Miss June wrote here. I can, I can hardly breathe. His love is so great. Oh, amen. 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 I, I just wanted to read what she wrote right there. I appreciate all of you's comments, all of you that say amen. Oh, I do. But you listen to what he says to us in the book of First Peter chapter 5. And, and pay very close attention to these verses. He said, humble yourselves, therefore under the mighty hand of God. What is that doing? That's coming to him. That's coming to him and humbling ourselves. You know, when he says humble, you know what he's saying? It's just us being willing to admit that we need the Lord. And Lord, I need your help. I need your help. Maybe tonight you need the Lord, period. Listen, if you're lost tonight, you definitely need the Lord. Amen. You need to get saved. You need to get right with God. Amen. Uh, and listen, that's one of the first things you have to learn. You have to learn to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Amen. That's what he says that he may exalt you in due time. When he saves us, he lifts us up. Amen. Aren't you thankful for that tonight? And listen, he said that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. All those things, this same thing, same thing Jesus said to us in Matthew. Peter is saying, now, what is he saying? Cast those things. Give them to God. Give them to the Lord. Amen. Come to him and listen. It ain't going to do no good, though, for you, if me or you either one. If we keep them, we got to let go of them. I mean, listen, this has been a hard thing for your pastor to learn. We have to let go of those things. Let go of them. Now, just here recently, and, and pastor don't say this a whole lot because I learned from one of the best about keeping things uh, as far as being pastor, keeping those things uh, and everything to myself. But I got really concerned about our air problem there at the church. Really concerned. But God showed me this past weekend, hey, I'll work it out. I prayed about how warm it would be in the church. And and when we got there, it was real cool still. And, and God said, don't worry about this. I've got it. 
And I've had to learn to let go because I worry about it. And listen, worry about my church people too, amen. But God says, hey, I'll take care of them too, amen. And I'll take care of you. See, you belong to God and I belong to God and us together belong to him, amen. I've many times pastor tells you that you're not my heritage, but his, amen. You belong to him. I'm just merely the under shepherd, the man that God has placed in charge, or if you will, or is placed as pastor of Good Samaritan. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy about being pastor. Amen. I believe it's what God wanted me to do. Amen. I believe that. And I believe me and my wife both are in God's will right where we're at. Amen. And we love our folks. Amen. But listen, casting, taking those things. So what pastor have to do uh, these last couple of weeks? I had to take that air conditioned problem and say, Lord, I just got to give it to you. And now God's worked it out. God's worked all these things out. Oh, listen, and it didn't come right away. It took it a couple of weeks to get worked out, but it all got worked out, and it all seems to be coming together, amen, little by little, and we're thankful, amen. And I, I'm just praising God. And, and Pastor, give you more details on Sunday uh, because I don't discuss business over Facebook, but uh, we'll talk about those things on Sunday. And, and then, uh, but, I, but I'm just saying, I, I'm just saying, that, that when we got problems, we got to come to him. We got to humble ourselves and say, Lord, I can't do nothing with this. Here, I got to give it to you, God. I give that person to you, God. I give this problem to you, Lord. You take it. Amen. And Miss June, she just repeated it. It's all in God's time. That's right. It's in his time. We got to let him take care of it. And I know, Roger, you meant amen, even though you typed A. Oh, me. I'm paying attention. Uh, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. You hear that? He cares for you. So why not just cast those things on him? But then, then here, here comes, here comes another warning from God. Here comes another one of his warnings. He says, be sober. That means to be awake, to be sober, to be vigilant, to be watching, because you have an adversary. Did you hear that? We have an adversary. We have somebody who's opposing not only us, but he opposes the things of God. So if you align yourself with God and you're saved tonight, you can rest assured if you're trying to do something for God and you're trying to live right and, and, and reflect that light that's in you, that God's put in you and, and everything, you can be promised Satan's going to bother you. He's going to come after you. Amen. Listen, he don't have to bother the drug addicts and all of them. Why? Because they're doing that. The man that's living out in the world, the man that's doing worldly things, Satan don't have to bother him. Why? Because he's already under his control. He's already following him. It's all of us. Why? Because me and you, we know the truth. And what Jesus said, that the truth would do what? Would set you free. Amen. And when Jesus and when God revealed the truth to me and you, it set us free when we accepted Christ. Amen. And Satan don't like that. But listen, he says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. He's trying to destroy, tear down the things that God has built up in your life and my life. Amen. And then he says, whom resists steadfast in the faith. How do you resist him? By being steadfast and trusting God. Amen. That's what faith means, to be complete, total trust in Jesus. Amen. That's who I'm trusting. Amen. Knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Listen, no matter what you're going through, there's other people, just like me and you, who are facing problems on a day-to-day -day basis. Amen. They are. There's things going on in everybody. Everybody's got problems. All of God's children, there's things coming. They just keep coming sometimes. Amen. But I like this. Look right here. Listen, listen to what he said. But the God of all grace, and we're going to close with these two verses right here. But the God of all grace, who have called us unto his eternal glory, Listen, do you hear what he said? He's called you. He called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's found in Peter too, amen. Oh, don't you like that? 
but the God of all grace. He's the God of all grace. God will give you grace to go through whatever you're going through. Amen. He will. And what is grace? Grace is unmerited favor from God. I believe it's also divine influence. Uh, listen, divine influence means God inserts itself in, into your life and into my life. Amen. But the God of all grace, who have called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. Now you notice the Lord is never left out of this. You can't leave Christ out of your life. You, you really can't. Amen. After that, you have suffered a while, just a little while. Make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. See, we go through these things that he may do what? That we may mature, that we may get established. That means we'll, we, listen, you'll trust God more, amen? And then he strengthens you and he settles you and he settles me. When we go through these things and we're trusting him, they're faith builders, Amen. They build our faith. And then the next time something comes up, we're like, hey, Lord, I can't do anything with it. See, that's what he wants from us. He wants us to just turn around and hand it right to him. Lord, this has gone wrong. Give it to him. Lord, this has gone wrong. Give it to him. You say, Pastor, you make it sound easy. You're right. Because I don't always do that either. And I'm still learning. Amen. I'm being honest. I'm being truthful. And listen, sometimes as human beings, we just can't seem to let go. But that's what he wants us to do. You've heard that old, so in, old saying, let go and let God. That's what he wants us to do. He wants us to come unto him. He wants us to bring those things to him. That he may do what? Make you perfect, mature you, establish you strengthen you, and settle you. He wants to do all those things. And then in verse 11, here comes the part that when these things take place and God takes care of them for us, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. You know what we need to do when somebody says, I just don't know how you get through that, God. We need to give him the glory. Amen. That's what he's looking for. Why? Because then people sees Christ in our life. And they may see him enough that they, listen, sometimes we're the only Bible that anybody ever reads. And when they see it enough, they may start wanting it. Hey, I want to get through my problems the way, the way, the way they do. I want, I want, I want, how do you do that? And then it starts to cause them to ask questions. And then that gives me and you the opportunity to be a witness for who? For the Lord Jesus Christ. I had a lady one time, and I'm not bragging on me. I'm bragging on God. I'm going to give him the glory. He deserves all the glory and all the dominion and all the things in the world. But she asked me one time, she said, Jeff, no matter what happens here at work, no matter what happens, you just seem to keep going. You just seem to keep going. You're always upbeat and just keep going. She said, I just don't know how you do it. I said, God. I said, greater is he that lives in me than he that lives in the world. I said, my faith, my trust in Jesus, my trust in the Lord Jesus Christ is what gets me through. We can be a witness for him if we'll just let our light so shine before men that they may see our good works. And do what? Give glory to our Father which is in heaven. Amen. And we want him to have the glory. We want him to have the honor. Amen. It's not about us anyway. It's all about him. Just like it says on the front of our bulletin in the church on Sunday. It's all about him. Amen. And we would just want to praise him tonight. We would just want to give him glory. And I just want to say to you tonight, if you're going through something tonight, if you're facing something tonight, listen, we all are. There's three places that pastor tells you that people are usually at. They're usually just getting ready to go into a storm. They're in the middle of a storm or they just come through a storm. Amen. But let me say something to you. No matter where you're at, he's always there. He's always there. And he's always looking to help you and me. Amen. Aren't you glad that Jesus died for you?
Listen, my friend, one last thing, one last thing. If you don't know the Lord tonight, if you've never repented of your sins, you've never received Christ as your Savior, only thing pastor would ask you tonight, <laughs> I like it, Paula. You can title it that if that's what you want to. I didn't have a title, but Sister Paula said tonight's lesson is titled, Turn It Over to God. I like it, Sister. God gave that to you. Hey, that's good by me. Amen. Just give it to him. Amen. Turn it all. Turn it. Hey, that'd be the only thing I'd say. Turn it over to him or turn it all over to him. Amen. But I do want to say this tonight. One last thing, and then we're going to close with a word of prayer. If you don't know Jesus tonight, my friend, somewhere in this time during this service, whether you're watching now, maybe you watch later, I don't know. Maybe he's knocking at your heart's door. Maybe you feel in that tug. Maybe you'd say, Pastor, I, I, I go to church and I, I've heard the messages that the preacher that I, the church I've been attending and, and God's been tugging at me and pulling at my heart. And then I listen to you on, on Facebook or YouTube and, 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 and when you preach, God's pulling it. Listen, what you're hearing, my friend, is the Holy Spirit dealing with you about where you're going to spend eternity. Now listen, the Bible says that if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that God will save us. Amen. He says there in the book of Romans 10, 9 and 10, But if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart, God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Don't you wait. Don't you wait. Don't wait till this broadcast is over. Right now, while God's dealing with your heart, you pray. You cut me off if that's what it takes. Turn, my, turn the volume down, whatever it takes. And you talk it over with God because he can save you tonight. I can't. I don't have that ability. I couldn't even save myself. I had to come to Jesus. Amen. When he come knocking, I opened that door, and I'm glad for the day that I opened that door, and I let him in. Whew. Greatest day in my life is the day that I come to know Jesus as my personal Savior. You say, Pastor, why you get so emotional? Because he stirs my heart. Amen. He does. He stirs my heart. And my heart, listen. I just want people to be saved. I just want you to get right with God. And I feel like there's somebody been watching. Watching tonight. Watching on Sunday. God's dealing with you. Would you please, 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 please. Just pray in your own words, and ask God to forgive you of your sins. That's all you got to do. And then just simply believe. Just simply believe that he died for you and he was buried. And on the third day, he arose again. While God's dealing with you, please don't pass up the opportunity because he may never knock again. He may never come your way again. He's only required to do it one time, but he is long-suffering. But remember, the Bible says that his spirit will not always strive with man. Please don't wait. I'm begging you. Please reach out. Ask God to forgive you tonight. As we pray, you mind the Lord. You mind God tonight. If there's something got between you and God, maybe you're toting a burden. Maybe there's problems you're trying to carry on your own. Why not just pray and give those things to him tonight? As we pray, you mind the Lord. Father in heaven, as we bow before thy throne this evening once again, Father, we just thank you for this 
time that we've had together, Lord. We just give you the honor and praise and glory for it all. I thank you tonight, Father. Father, I just pray. Lord, I just feel that there's somebody been watching lately. Somebody who's lost and undone without you, Lord. Lord, I don't know who they are. But Lord, I know you know. Lord, I just pray that you'd speak to those hearts tonight. Draw them to you, Lord, and save them before it's eternally everlasting too late. And then, Father, I just pray tonight, help each and every one of us to examine our hearts, Lord. Is there something that we're trying to tote on our own, Lord? Is there something that we're trying to do that that you truly want to help us do, Lord? I pray tonight, Lord, that we'll take those burdens off of us and hand them to you. That we'll cast them on you because you do, as your word says, you do care for us. And now, Father, I just pray for the many needs of our church those who are facing problems, those who are having problems, Lord, those who are just going through things, Lord, I pray and ask you to reach down and touch them. Speak peace unto those situations, Lord. And Father, continue to bless our church family, those who are in attend and those who watch us, Father. Bless each and every home, Lord. Put your hand upon it, Lord, and touch each and every one according to your will. And Lord, tonight we just want to say that we love you, Lord. We love you and thank you, Lord. Thank you tonight. We give you honor and praise and glory above all other things. And we just love you, Father. Thank you for what you've done, what you're going to do. We just give you all the praise and glory for it all, Lord. In Jesus' precious holy name we pray and ask all these things and for his sake, amen. Well, it's certainly good to have been on with you tonight and I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope these that God's word has been an encouragement to you tonight and Listen, I just want to say to you, I hope you have a good rest of the week. Uh, remember all our announcements. Please remember Miss Stephanie's family on Saturday as we'll be holding that memorial service for her dear sweet mom and uh, and everything. And uh, we just want to say two things to you, and then Pastor's going to get off here. Number one tonight, God loves you tonight. Number two tonight, Pastor Jeff and Miss Melissa, we love you too. And if you need anything or we can be of a help to you, please don't hesitate. Reach out to us. Let us know. We'll try to help you in any way we can. Hope to see our church folks on Sunday. Hope to see you with us on Facebook. Those of you that join us that way on Sundays and Wednesdays, uh, Pastor, just want to say thank you. Thank you to all of our church family and all of our church friends. Amen. And I uh, hope you have a wonderful evening. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye now.